the number one most effective way to change your life is to change your morning routine. You don't have to drink caffeine or, or something. You shouldn't be relying on any drink or anything for you to be able to be awake. Like, like that's yeah. just 43% of Americans say that coffee is an essential part of their morning. Oh my God. That we are. <laughs> a a, okay. This is this well, a essential. topic. Essential. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Nice Veins Bro podcast, the number one personal development podcast for healthcare and wellness professionals. I am Nene Pablo, host of this podcast, registered nurse and creator of Nice Veins Bro. And I am excited, thrilled, because I get to have <laughs> Lexa on the podcast. You need to have the mic up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a noob. <laughs> you gotta keep it up. You know, the people can so actually sorry. hear you. <laughs> Stage fright. So, uh, um, for those of you who do not know, uh, Lexa, I, I have referred to you before on some of the podcasts. Yeah. But you are my wife. Yeah. And you're also a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. So, hoorah on that. Hoorah. <laughs> Bo both of us are, a, we're a registered nurse couple. <laughs> Power couple. Wow. <laughs> okay, I gotta be serious now. This is a serious podcast. <laughs> Just kidding. But no, I'm, I really am happy that uh, we get to do this. We are sitting on our couch, very chill on a Sunday, and we get to just talk about um, things that hopefully will be beneficial uh, for other people who are listening. And it's stuff that we are also learning in the process of learning mm -hmm. too. We're, we, we have a passion for personal development, and hopefully this is something that is fruitful for other people. But today we are talking about... Thank you for the, thank you for the special effects. <laughs> We're talking about daily routines, morning routines, morning routines to be specific. Yeah. And so, um, this, this topic I think is extremely important because I'm going to say this at the beginning of the podcast and to end the podcast, okay. but because I, what I really want to drive home today is that the number one most effective way to change your life mm -hmm. is to change your morning routine. Hmm. It is to change your morning routine because it has so much of an effect mm -hmm. on the rest of your day. And yeah. I know we're going to get into that in a little bit, yeah. but it has so such a big effect on the rest of the day. It sends, it sets the tone yeah. for the rest of the day. Yeah. And as everyone knows, a whole life is made up of moments. Ooh. moments and that's days really and so yeah. if if you're setting this the tone for the rest of your day that's one day after another after another and it helps us to set habits mm -hmm. healthy habits starting with the right so i know i'm like already getting into the wow, the stuff yeah. but i i just wanted to share that because i want that to be the absolute message like the number one message people get because i think it's so so important yeah yeah i think it's interesting because for someone like me who appreciates the spontaneity in life. Is that how you pronounce that? Spontaneity? Yeah, I spontaneity. I thought yeah. it was spontane spontaneity. <laughs> but I also grew up with... No. We're, we're, we're kids from ethnic parents. So if <laughs> yeah, honestly, we're ethnic, so. both of us probably have words we pronounce wrong in our vocabulary because yeah. of our parents. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt it's you. It's okay. For somebody who loves spontaneity, or I like spontaneity, um, I also realize that I have the tendency to not be very organized. I am a can be and have the tendency to be scatterbrained. And if like there's, if there's not a plan in place, then it's easy for me to just waste time and let life kind of go on. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably everybody, but I feel like I especially can fall prey to wasting time mm -hmm. and, and losing not just like hours or minutes, but like days and weeks yeah. to, unintentional, just unintentional life. You know, we talk about God, wellness, and purpose as kind of the pillars of what Nice Veins Bro is about. As Christians, having God as the center of our lives, we want to be intentional with making sure that our time is used well. Yeah. Um, you know, it speaks about redeeming the time for the days are evil in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, we need to make sure that the time we have here on earth, which is very short, is used productively, is used well and wisely, stewarded um, in the way that that God really commands us to do in mm -hmm. the Bible. And so, no, a to-do list every day is good, but 
it could be better. We can go through a day with more intention and accomplish more for the kingdom of God, especially if we have more than just a to-do list. In my morning routine, which I just like a couple days ago, kind of tried to revamp and get intentional about setting, what am I going to do in the mornings? Like, what do I want out of my life? And how can I set up my morning routine to support what I want in my life? Like, I want to make my bed. So I start my day with intentionality. That's and huge, by the way. My mom has sent me so many Instagram reels about <laughs> make your bed in the morning. Why is it so important to make your bed? Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> well, because well. it's you're, you're starting off the day with a win. Yeah. It's like a tiny thing. Yes. And, and I think it sets the rest of the day in a positive note. If you already accomplished the simplest thing, mm -hmm. then you're already kind of setting yourself up for success. Yeah. It's like a really small thing, but... Mm -hmm. Like putting all the little things that you do when you get ready in the restroom for the day, you know, like mm -hmm. brushing my teeth, mm -hmm. washing my face, blah, blah, blah. I actually listed those things out just so I could analyze what I was doing with my time in the mornings. I kind of want to uh, split those two up really quick. When you say morning and when you talk about routine, morning specifically, I just want to, there's a lot of people who are not, they say, oh, we're not morning people, especially, you know, all these like night shift people in, in healthcare. There's a ton of people who are, who are working. It's like a 24 hour care because some people wake up in the evening to go to work. Oh, I see what you you're saying. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So you're so, not saying like, oh my goodness, it has to be at between the hours of 5 a.m. Yeah. and 10 a.m. Right. Because the, the now, however, I do want to speak on that though, because it is true that we are, we are created. We have like a rhythm, you know, we have a circadian rhythm that works off the clock of the sun, you know what I'm saying? Like when the sun is up, we are awake. When the sun goes down, we, you know, our bodies are prepared to go to sleep or whatever. That's just the way that we work. And so for the general rule, it is healthier to be on a daily schedule. Like it, it is, that is true. And even if you are working a night shift, this will help for the days that you are off. I would yep. encourage anybody, listen, yo, I know it's hard. But like night shift sucks for your health. Yeah. I don't believe anybody that says, I'm just a night owl. No, like you're going against your body's will. <laughs> yeah. just, you might have, you might have like you made your body used to it. You trained yourself. You trained your body to get used to it. But, but it's, like, it doesn't mean that is the way that you were born. Studies show yeah. what I don't have citation references exactly. for. <laughs> I'm just saying. But life expectancy for people on night shift who do that for prolonged years, like for many, many years. You shave off years off yeah, your life, Yeah, expectancy bro. is just shorter. Yeah. Anyway, so, but I just wanted to kind of make that clear because in healthcare, you have so many people who work night shift and we kind of buy into the lie that, oh, I'm just nocturnal. That's just the way I function. Like, no offense, but you've trained your body to do that. That's not, that is not natural. Okay. It's just not natural. That's not the way we were created. But I do want to talk to the people who do have those days where they can wake up in the actual morning and I want to say, you know, uh, I found this thing on Business Insider that says, this is how important morning routines are, okay? People who wake up before the sun rises, and they, this is all based on uh, actual uh, research that they did, have more success in their careers. They procrastinate far less. They have a more positive attitude. These are people who wake up before the sun rises, okay? Okay. Become more persistent and cooperative. They, it helps pre uh, prevent depression. They have a healthier, uh, healthier overall habits and, ch and choices that they make throughout the day. They're less stressed and they even have lower BMIs and keep like the weight off, you know, for a healthy weight wow. for an individual. Wow. So that's in general. Obviously, there's many, many factors. But I just wanted to like mention waking up before the sun, you know, people who say, oh, I just don't want to wake up early. I'm not a morning person. There are many, many benefits to morning, you know, waking up before the sun and, and keeping a certain routine. Yeah. Hey, hey up, hey up, hey up. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you going to tell people who don't want to wake up early? You know, those people who do say that they are night owls. Right. I think, I think we can encourage everybody that, you know, we can still approach our mornings with intentionality and still do like a 1% better than we're already doing. That is so Like true. you don't have to, yeah. if you like work a- Four o'clock like, in the morning. Like at 11 to 11 shift, like 11 yeah. p.m. to 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. or 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., whatever shift. And you like, your sleep hours are kind of 
weird and then you wake up not before dawn. You mm-hmm. can't wake up before dawn because you're still working then or whatever your circumstances are. Um, there's still a way to apply the principles yes. we're going to talk about yes. today in your existing mm-hmm. routine. Mm-hmm. Um, and additionally, there's plenty of people out there and you can search on YouTube people who are like trying to change their circadian rhythm or like adjust their routine and they experiment making themselves morning morning people Mm -hmm. like they they have tried to become morning people um and you can just kind of look up their experiences and see if is it possible because i really feel like it is possible to make yourself a morning we are we are very very our brain is very it's called plasticity we learned right so if we're able to change that, we are cha- we are able to do it. We are able to create new habits. However, however, yeah. <laughs> I get that it's difficult. And you, what you were mentioning just now is just that if you are in a place where your job, it, it has those harsh hours, you know, where you're on 11-11 or you're working night shift or something, there are still things that you can do yeah. to be healthy. And I don't think we should use those those bad situations or environments or schedules to just use it as an excuse to be unhealthy in every other area of our life. Yeah. And even if your reason for not becoming a morning person is just simply you don't want to, (laughs) you don't want to put the effort in to do that drastic of a change at this point of your life. You know what? I'm going to say that's okay. We're still going to talk about some applicable principles that you can still use to make one day a day of progress. So how do we, how do we make it practical? I've been sleeping in. We've been sleeping in a lot. Yes. <laughs> Confession. <laughs> We've been sleeping in a lot. And when we say sleeping in, we're not talking about 11 o'clock. Yeah, no. We just sleep in because we say we want to wake up at five and then we end up waking up at seven, you know what I mean? Or at, yeah. or at 6.45 or yeah. whatever. So it's just later than what we wanted to. Practically, I would say, you know, I would challenge you to maybe take a look and see what you do when you wake up. Because like, I took out a little like section of my iPad and just started writing out when I wake up, what do I do? You know, I want to make the bed. Um, I want to make the bed first and it only takes like a minute. Um, and then I'm going to go to the bathroom and get ready for my day. Um, I have some, some like points that I wrote out that I thought would be part of my morning routine, but I re- I realize now that most of them have to do with the post, like getting ready portion of my morning. What like, do you mean getting like, ready? So, so I kind of like, listed out my morning as two sections. So the first section is like when I wake up and brush my teeth and like put makeup on, use the bathroom, you know, like those kinds of things. Then the second part of my morning is like intentionality in talking to God, planning my day, listing out things that I'm grateful for. So you know what I'm saying? saying. Yeah. So it's like what you're, what you're going to list out are things that you do after you've brushed your teeth. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so morning routine. Let's take that. Let's let's take that and and ride with it. So, what you're suggesting is that there are benefits that people can take after they wake up and they brush their teeth and are you know getting ready and they're awake now. There's still this piece before they start their day, you know, with work or whatever it is. This is what you're talking about. There's this little portion of time that you say there's benefit in doing what? What are those practical things? Start your day with making your bed. There. That's pretty simple, right? That's a win. <laughs> That's a win. It's pretty easy to, to not overcomplicate things. Just start your day by making your bed. Mm-hmm. Um, step two, include something in your morning routine that is enjoyable. Mm-hmm. So for me, like we just talked about how it's so easy to sleep in and mm-hmm. just like not get up and snooze 50 million times. Um, but I would say like put something in the kitchen like tell yourself or like prepare yourself for something enjoyable. And for me, that is like making a matcha latte, like knowing that I have to go to the kitchen to make that. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what I, I read that in, but it might have been atomic. It was atomic. So atomic habits, atomic habits by James clear. James clear. He's a good, he's a good bro. But highly recommend that book. And one principle that he put into like the process of creating new habits is to make it enjoyable. Make it enjoyable. Make it attractive. Make it something that you're looking forward to. Like when you say exactly. you make your matcha latte, you're there just like, yeah, look at this matcha latte, <laughs> man. It's so calming. 
it's like pretty. meditation while I'm making my coffee. <laughs> and some people do that. Like, yeah. There's some people yeah. out here like homemade baristas. They're yeah. out there, you know, you know who not you are. In- I'm not that intense. Like You're I, not that intense. But I don't have the whole coffee routine down. And not everybody wants to drink a matcha. Maybe it's a this smoothie. This guy hates matcha. I don't like it. Hates Might me. as well go outside cho- like and, so and munch on some grass. It's so rude because it's so good. But anywho, anyway, make make it enjoyable. Yeah, make it enjoyable. Put something in the midst of your morning routine that will force you to get out of bed yeah. or to go to a different room that you're going to have your Bible study or whatever. You know, just put something in your morning routine that you will enjoy and will get you out of bed. Yeah. Number three, quiet time in the mornings with just you, your thoughts, silence, and, and, and God, like yeah. um, prayer. Prayer, like just take some time at the beginning because that's part of setting the tone for your day. You don't just want to set your day up for success by making your bed mm-hmm. or like getting out of bed and just like being happy that you got up, mm-hmm. you know? I feel like another part of the intentionality in life is each day sitting down in that quietness because slowing down, yeah, yeah, slowing down at the beginning and setting your intentions or your to do's, talking to God before I will add before scrolling your phone Ugh. because you will screw things up. <laughs> yeah, man, you will screw it all up if you keep your phone. So one thing we're doing. Yeah. And we're pretty successful at it is that we <laughs> yeah. set our we put our phones in the kitchen. We go to bed. We have a little alarm clock because that's one of the things I was like, hey, we, I, because I used to use my phone for an alarm clock, but now we have our own separate alarm clock and we have it at the bed, at the bedside, (laughs) (laughs) at our bed space side. (laughs) And so that wakes us up. But then, you know, the phones are in the kitchen. So we don't roll out of bed and scroll Instagram because it'll ruin your, it will. Oh, it's so bad. So you know the meditation piece, do that before or read a book, something that will slow you down before you go and pick up your phone and answer emails. Yeah. And you recognize that the order of caffeine or coffee or a special drink comes before doing something where you're sitting in quiet, it's intentional. <laughs> so that you're awake. So that you're awake. Okay. You don't have to drink caffeine or, or something like that. Yeah. But especially, just, especially if you, if you have a great night before you, yeah. know, you shouldn't be relying on any, yeah any drink or anything for you to be able to be awake. Like, like that's yeah. just, you may not need the caffeine podcast, to wake up. It, but, exactly. Yeah. But you know, I read somewhere reasons. that 43% of Americans say that coffee is an essential part of their morning. Oh my word. That we are what? A co- okay. This is this for a essential. Topic, we are a topic talking. for another time. Yeah. Anyway, we're on number four now. So yes. but yeah, so we, meditation we were at. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we were talking about how just taking a quiet moment at the beginning of your day. Um I'm gonna go back again as Christians, the importance of talking to God and reading the Bible at the beginning of your day. I feel, I really do feel like it's even more helpful to read the Bible and pray at the beginning of your day than to just do it at nighttime. Yeah. Because people, I, I mean, I will I will admit or I will encourage anyone, it doesn't matter what time of day you read the Bible, it's still going to benefit you. But I would say there's an additional there's blessing. There's something about the, the morning. There's an additional yeah, yeah. blessing and help that... Mm-hmm there is in reading the Bible right. and praying in the morning. Part of how we live life and our actions are rooted in our beliefs. Oh man, that's that's good. Yes. If at the beginning of each day we're reviewing what we believe. Yeah. You affirm the good. Yeah. You affirm the truth. Yeah. That you know your identity, your yeah. real identity, you affirm who you are. You affirm you remind yourself of the eternal perspective. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Ain't that necessary? Yes. Especially in this world. Because yeah. we know that we could have a little prayer in the morning and walk out and drive to work and somebody cuts us off. Mm-hmm. But it's not just having a quick two minute prayer, mm-hmm. rolling out yeah. of bed and then brushing your teeth and leaving. Like it's about taking that time. Yeah. And anyway, we're getting to a whole other I, thing. But I mean, morning I, routines, y'all. Try not to beat a dead horse, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Isn't that the expression? The horse is dead. Uh, okay. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, I just want to thank you for listening. It means the world to me, especially because at the time of this recording, I'm still only a couple months from starting this whole thing. So if you're interested in helping me build this brand even more, please share this podcast on your social media and grab some merch from the website at niceveinsbro.com. Got some great stuff there for sale. Send me a DM on Instagram and share some encouragement, some love and some hate. I will welcome that too, but don't be shy. Talk to you soon. And then I guess the last thing is just let your goal in your morning routines be consistency. Because mm. you could have a good routine, but only do it once a week or yeah, once like every month. Yeah, you could have like the, the freaking best routine on the face of the planet and you do it three times. In and the then year. the fourth, yeah, you're done. <laughs> so, so... Yeah. So let's, so when we bring it, so consistency is more important than intensity. Yeah. So when you're so yeah. focused on, man, I'm going to be, I'm going to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'm going to spend <sighs> three hours on my morning. Yeah. Routine. And then I go to the gym and I'm going to spend six hours you know, lifting. It's like, okay, all right, we yeah. let's, let's bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> consistency. Yeah. It's like the 1%. That's why it's called atomic habits. Yeah. You're James taking another, another principle from Atomic Habits. Listen, it's like the 1% better. It, yeah, time. it's very, very small things, and it's making sure that you keep those things consistent. So to bring it all together, here's here's what we're learning, and here's what we're saying, because we're not just saying this because we're, we've got it perfect. I mean, we're still learning, but morning routines are the most effective way to change your life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... It's not a drastic thing that needs to be done. Yeah. Like, listen closely. If you're listening to this and you're on your way to work or you just got off work and you're thinking, my gosh, I have so many things on my plate. How can I have this, all this time in the morning when I'm rushing and all this stuff? And just just commit to one small thing, one small thing and master that one small thing. If that one small thing is just to make your bed in the morning. Yeah. And that's it. And that's all you accomplish for this week. Consistently, every single day. That is the beginning to a life that has changed. Because once you accomplish this one thing, you have more confidence and more willpower to say, okay, what's next? What can I conquer next? You know? And and read a book like Atomic Habits, really. Like, do it and, and see what else you can do. Because what he does, what he says, it's not even so much about willpower. It's about mm-hmm. building a habit on top of another habit mm-hmm. on top of it and making it easy to then, you know, yeah. start a, a, what is that? A momentum. chain of events. Yeah. Yeah. A Getting momentum. momentum. Get momentum and a chain of events that will then, you know, it, once you finish your bed and you do that, you know, you're more willing to do the next thing and the next thing. And then cold showers. I was, that was another thing oh, I wanted I to say. Yeah, cold yeah. showers. But that's there's so many things we could talk about. But yeah, yeah like true. just do those one thing. So it's it's not this whole drastic change that you got to do in the mornings. But I will tell you this as as we wrap things up. When we decided to put our phones in the kitchen, it seemed like a small thing. I mean, it seemed like a big thing actually at first. It was like, oh man, we have to move it's our stuff be over. So there. hard. But it was one. Thing. Yeah. It was one thing. And I will tell you, in the mornings, and even when we go to bed and yeah. we don't have our phone, you know, and we're not <laughs> and we're not scrolling, yeah. you know, right until, before bed. Right before bed. You set yourself up for the morning. Yeah. The night before is what you do yeah. to set up to set yourself up for the early morning the next day. For and so show. it's just one thing. It's just one thing. Don't stress about it. Don't feel like you've got to change your whole life. Focus on the small things you can do today. So you're listening to this. The practical thing is tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, when that alarm hits, just remember, make your bed. Make your bed. Start small. 1% better every day. So thank you so much for joining um, and listening to this podcast. It literally means so much to me. Uh, Alexa knows that every time I get a comment on a video or something, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a comment. Whether good or bad. <laughs> like, Whether it's haters. good or bad, I'm like, hey, look, we got a hater. That's great. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoy doing stuff like this um, and it, it, it's it's great. Um, we have a vision for this to, to get big and it's something that we enjoy. We want to be able to help 
our profession, the people in our profession, we've noticed that are, are broken. And so we want to just help our profession find personal development and some healing that is there um, with God, wellness, and purpose. And so if you believe in that, go ahead and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on a podcast uh, platform. Make sure and leave a five-star review because it really does help and it helps kick it out to the algorithm so other people can find and, and see the benefit in some of the stuff that we say. Do you know what the closing words are? Oh, no. Remember to be a positive force and influence within healthcare and society. Que Dios me los bendiga. Oh, I hit the microphone. <laughs> it's stupid. When I would listen to podcasts before I became a podcaster myself, I didn't realize how much leaving a five-star review helped. And so now on this side, I just want you to know that it really does mean a whole lot when people review and share the content so if you enjoyed it, please share it with somebody and leave a five-star review on whichever platform you use, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And if you're interested, you can also find us on social media at NiceVeinsBro or shop online at NiceVeinsBro.com. My personal stuff you can find under Nene Pablo, which is spelled N-E-N-E. P-A-B-L-O. I spend most of my time on YouTube making vlogs and videos and on Instagram. So I would love to connect with you. And remember, be a positive force and influence within healthcare and society. It's all about God, wellness, and purpose here. Thank you for listening.